اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمي وحد من لساني يفقه قولي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ماذا دي أولياء الله عينونا بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله والصلاة نسي الشيخ عبد الله الفائز الزغستاني سلطان يا سيد الشيخ محمد ناظم عادل حقا نسي الشيخ محمد عادل رباني إجال الله عينونا بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله عسى نحن بفضل الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Those who join us online and said Assalamu alaikum We say wa alaikum Assalamu wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Sister Asma, Sheikh Abdul Wahid Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad We are in Ashur al-Hurum These are the special months of Hajj The three months is said that One month before Hajj and one month after Hajj Because at that time People in order to make Hajj They would leave sometimes a month before the season. And they used to, in those sanctified hurum months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it safe for the travelers to his house that no, no fighting, no war at that time in those ashur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made those months special. So for us, we honor and everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors. And this is a good time, these months are a good time for a person to increase uh, their good deeds and to try their best to be on good standing, inshallah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us in this holy days that are coming, one of the holiest days is the month of, uh, months is the, is the month, these months and one of the holiest days that is coming is the month of uh, the day of Arafah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you to reach those good days and to nowadays not many people are going to Hajj because the rules are only people living in Saudi Arabia and the Syria are going to Hajj. Inna al-amalu bin niyat wa li kulli imri'im manawa hadith al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. InshaAllah, those who are intending to go to Hajj, Allah is granting them the reward of Hajj, inshallah, as if they have went. And those who are not, inshallah, Allah grant us to do everything pleasing to Allah in these holy months. We have, haven't been very active since the end of the month of Ramadan, uh, except for the weekly adhka, dhikr, dhikr khatm al khawajagan. But inshallah, we we are intending to resume, inshallah, to do more activity in this holy month starting this coming weekend, next weekend, not this weekend, the one following, inshallah. We will do a weekly maulid uh, slash uh, speaking about the, something about that showcases the magnificence of our beloved Prophet Wasallam, so that we increase our connection and our attachment to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today, I wanted to speak about the mercy of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent him as mercy to all creation, those who are accepting him and those who are not accepting him. Even the Fasiq, even the Kafir, he is mercy for everything in creation. And I came across a beautiful hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد وقد روي أن عربيا جاء ويطلب منه شيئا According to the seerah that an Arabi Arabi is a Bedouin from the desert came to ask Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم something فأعطاه And Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم gave him he, he never said no to anybody And, يعني, Unless somebody was transgressing against the rules of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and the the rights of others, he would never say no. And so a Bedouin came to him and asked him for something and Prophet ﷺ gave. But this Bedouin was very rough 
and ill-mannered. So he said to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Sallallahu he gave him and said, قال, إليك, did I do you justice? Did I do good to you? And that Arabi said to him, لا, you did not. And imagine you're sitting amongst your companions. This is Sayyid al-Mursaleen wa Imam al muttaqin This is the one that went to Qaba Qawseen. This is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidu Bani Adam wa Lafakhr. Yani there is no one uh, above the rank of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in creation. And a Bedouin coming from the desert with no introduction, say, give me, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him and then asked him, did I do you justice? Did I do good to you? And he said, no. لا ولا أجملت and you haven't done any good فغضب المسلمون وقاموا إليك so imagine يعني you're in Medina uh, sitting with Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم you are from his companions that uh, yeah to to them uh, his smile from him is they'll sacrifice their lives for him to be happy They'll give, they gave up everything because of their ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu They would gladly sacrifice their lives and livelihoods just if he can be happy. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And this man that no one knows walks in and disrespects that messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. The one that is most beloved to you disrespects him in very, very vulgar fashion. Yani he asked, a prophet gave him, and then he, and he showed such disrespect. So the companions couldn't control themselves. They, they got up to, to, uh, yani to, to discipline him, to maybe grab him and kick him out. And Prophet ﷺ, he saw them like this. And he, فَأَشَارَ إِلَيْهِمْ He didn't say anything. He, he pointed to them and leave him. And that's all it took from Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. They, they were رَهْنَ إِشَارَتِهِ If they don't have to, يعني one, one gesture from Prophet ﷺ was enough for the Sahaba to move to action or to seize and be uh, still. He gestured for them to stop with, uh, not, to, not to harm him. And then Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu went into his house, came back out. No, he went into his house, thumma arsala ilayhi. So he went to his house, then he sent for that Arabi to, to follow him. And then he gave him. Then he said to him, have I sent to Ilaik? After giving him the second time, he said, what about now? Have I done good to you? And the Arabi said, Naam fajazak Allahu min ahlin. He said, yes, may Allah reward you uh, from reward you and grant you goodness to you and your family and your tribe. فقال له النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنك قلت ما قلت وفي نفس أصحابي من ذلك شيء فإن أحببت فقل بين أيديهم ما قلت فقل بين أيديهم ما قلت بين يدي حتى يذهب ما في صدورهم حتى يذهب ما في صدورهم عليك so, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, see his, how, how soft he was, how caring he was. Bil mu'minina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him, bil mu'minina ra'ufur rahim. Ra'uf, compassionate, soft, kind, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So, not only he gave this man who just disrespected him again. But he said to him, have I done good to you? He said, yes. He said, 
Uh, and that person thanked him and prayed for him and his family. And he said, look, outside you, you said what you said and my companions, it harmed them. So they have uh, some uh, bad feelings towards you now because of that. Uh, you, have, you, have, yeah, you have caused them to dislike you because you said this. So what you said to me here, what the nice thing you said, the dua you made for me, can you do it for in front of them? He said, yes. So yani, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this man came from nowhere. No one, he is he, not a previous acquaintance. He is of no, he gave him second time after disrespecting him. He could have just said, Assalamu Alaikum, yal. off to where you came from. But he even wanted to show wanted the Sahaba not to have bad feelings towards this man. Yani he wanted them, he wanted to remove whatever ill feelings they had towards this man. He wanted to also remove it on top of his giving him first time, second time, being halim and patient with him, with his disrespect. He even didn't want his companions to feel ill towards this human being. And he also wants to, te to teach them. This is something, how much we need this akhlaq, how much we need these manners now in dealing with each other. Allah, Allah. So next day, when Prophet Sallallahu saw this uh, Arabi in the gathering, he said to him, he said to his companions, فَلَمَّا كَانَ الْغَدْ he said, إِنَّ هَذَا الْأَعْرَابِ قَالَ مَا قَالْ فَزِدْنَاهِ فَزَعِمَ أَنَّهُ رَضِيَ أَكَذَلِكْ He said, this Arabi came and said what he said in front of you. And we gave him more. And he, he claimed that he was happy and pleased with us. Is that so to the Arabi, to the Bedouin? And the Bedouin said, نعم فجزاك الله من أهل وعشيرة خيرا. and he said it repeated exactly the same thing, the same dua for Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and his tribe and his family. and this is here where something happened, an instance. and he is معلم الناس الخير. he is the one who teaches goodness to all of humanity. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. what did he say? Now that this instance happened and the companions had these bad feelings and this karam, this generosity of Prophet ﷺ and this patience and this forbearance that Prophet ﷺ showed, now he is going to give them the fruit, the wisdom of such a thing, of why he behaves in this way وسلم, why he is perfect in his behavior. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مثلي ومثل هذا مثل رجل, رجل له ناقة شردت عليه He said the example, the similitude, the example of this man, of myself and this man, يعني what happened, is the example of a man who had a camel and that camel ran away, شردت means Sharadat Ali means when the camel runs away. And people wanting to do, do me a favor when my camel ran away, they followed the camel. You know, their intention is to do something good, but they followed the camel. Because now they're following the camel, the camel is even running further. The camel is even scared now because now he has a bunch of people running behind him. So they're all chasing. He thinks that he's being chased, so the camel is running away further and harder. Then the man, when he saw this, when he saw the result of the actions of those who are trying to help him, that it's, it is producing the opposite effect, he called them. He said, no, leave, leave, leave my camel to me. Don't interfere. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi. 
فإني أرفق بها منكم وأعلم because I am I am more caring for my own camel than you are and I also more knowledgeable about how to deal with my own camel she, it's my camel so I know what brings her and I know what makes her run away so Prophet ﷺ is teaching them that his mission when someone comes to his presence don't try to fix him don't try to teach him in my presence I know he's my example and his example is like he يعني he is from my ummah and nabiyu awla bil mu'minin min anfusihim prophet is more entitled to the believers than their own self we are all his children he's more entitled to us than our own parents than than we are entitled to our own children as well sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam so he's saying leave me leave leave them to me why why Prophet? So because Prophet doesn't want this man to run away. Prophet doesn't want this man to have a bad ending. He came to his presence and he showed disrespect. But Prophet ﷺ, he is rahmatan lil alameen. He is mercy. He doesn't want a retribution for him. So he didn't care. When somebody harmed him personally, he overlooked. He forgave. He forget. He never took retribution. For, his, for somebody wronging him personally, sallallahu Because he is mercy, he is rahmah. So his mission is to bring people into safety, into heavens, into good endings. So sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when he said that to them, he said, leave, leave my camel to me. I know, I know it better. So when he said this and he, he went to his camel, فتوجه لها بين يديها فأخذ لها من قمام الأرض فردها and then he took something from the ground uh, to lure it to bring back his camel with it and the camel came back to its owner until the camel came between his hands واستناخت وشد عليها رحلة and then sat down in front of him and then that man put the saddle on on the the camel and tied it and he said wa inni law taraktukum haythu qala ar-rajul ma qala fa qataltum dakhala an-nar and he said to them and had i left you to your own devices had i not interfered when you got offended because he disrespected me and had i let you harm him or kill him he would have entered hell. He would, he would have had a bad ending. Why? Because you can't disrespect the Prophet He is Habibu Rabbil Alameen. And this is something for us to be aware. This man came to Prophet and he was a Muslim and he disrespected him. Prophet said, had you killed him, he would have ended up in hell. Had you killed him in his state of dishonoring and disrespecting me, he would have ended up in a bad place. So this is for anyone who harms Prophet ﷺ in, in, in his family. This is a warning. Anyone who says something ill about him, even now, in 1400 years later, anyone who harms him in any which way, in shape and form, they have to be worried. Because if you die in that state of disrespect of Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ, you will be in a bad state in Akhirah. So Prophet ﷺ said, I, I wanted to save him. And this is to showcase that your Nabi ﷺ, he is a Rahma al Muhdat. He is Rahmatan al Alameen, Shafi'i al Mudnibin. He is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His mission is to save people from hells, his mission is to save people from difficulty. Even if it means that he carries their harm and carries their disrespect, he will do it in order to save them. May Allah increase us in love and ishq for Sayyidina Muhammad. Make us only to show reverence and respect for our beloved Prophet. May Allah raise our Prophet and grant him ma huwa ahlu. 
اللهم اجعلنا نبينا ما هو اهله. We, we don't know the qadr of our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So we say, Ya Rabbi, grant him, reward him what he's entitled to, according to how you see your beloved. Reward him, inshallah. ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الحبيب بحرمة الفاتحة.